Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course aspects of biochemical engineering. Today is the last lecture. I, 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 shall, I shall make some summary and conclusion of the course and, uh, and try to point out what is the purpose of this course, how we design the course, what are the different, uh, um, uh, different uh, uh, things we covered in this particular course. At the end, I shall, I shall discuss that uh, what are the things you should get out of this course and lastly i shall i shall i shall give the in, a little introduction to my uh, ta's and the and also i want to show you some kind of video of 20 liter bioreactor for producing hydrogen it is a continuous uh, operation system uh, so let us start with <coughs> that you know how we design this course uh, if you look at this uh, that you know that we we divided into three different areas now <coughs> if you look that first is we have the chemical reaction engineering i told you to know uh, the biochemical engineering uh, that first we should know should have some kind of idea on the chemical reaction engineering and to know the chemical in reaction engineering first we try to discuss the chemical reaction thermodynamics and we know the chemical reaction thermodynamics plays important role as per any chemical <coughs> reaction is concerned and from the, uh, the that reaction thermodynamics we can find out where the nature of the reaction whether it is spontaneous or non spontaneous and to what extent the reaction takes place then we have we discuss the <coughs> chemical reaction kinetics which is appears to be the most important part of the any kind of chemical process pro to understand the chemical process we want to find out different kinetic constant rate equation we develop try to do the simulation of the uh, equation to find out the validity of the equation and this equation uh, this uh, particular kinetics we use for the reactor design and in the reactor design is a very important part in the chemical engineering because here <coughs> we try to find out what is the what is the volume of the reactor to get a desired amount of product so we do the detailed analysis of the reactor now after after having this information then we switch over to the uh, biochemical reaction kinetics in the biochemical reaction kinetics first we try to understand what is the stoichiometry of the bioprocess which is very important because the reason is that the, if you know the stoichiometry of the bioprocess then we can find out the material and energy analysis of the process which is very important from the stoichiometry we can find out what is the theoretical yield of the process and for the, so that we can we can design our process accordingly and then we after that we covered the enzymatic reaction kinetics both by using free and immobilized enzyme now uh, <coughs> we know that free enzymes when we have uh, we have two type of enzymes one is uh, soluble enzymes and insoluble enzymes when we and our substrate mostly is, is soluble in nature so if your substrate is soluble enzyme is soluble then we consider as a homogeneous reaction how the homogeneous reaction is uh, that reaction kinetics can be uh, can be uh, explained that we discuss in this enzymatic reaction kinetics but if we have, but uh, but another situation that we have or the heterogeneous reaction kinetics where where the particularly we have immobilized uh, cells immobilization of the cells take place on the solid matrix as as it is uh, fixed on the solid matrix then in the media in the in the particular liquid in the reaction mixture you have two phase one is liquid phase another is solid phase and we know in case of heterogeneous reaction one phase suppose until unless is come in contact with in co with the other phase the reaction cannot take place and after reaction is over then <coughs> the product should diffuse to the previous phase then you know we can get the product 
So, <clears throat> after having this information, then we try to understand the microbial growth, product formation and substrate degradation kinetics. And if you look at the microbial system, we find out they follow the metabolic pathways and in the metabolic pathways we have a chain reaction and in the chain reaction we have number of steps involved in the each and every step usually governed by different enzymes. So, it is a multi enzyme system. So, we try to and, and we try to discuss what is the basic difference between the living system and the non-living system and then we also discuss that what is the how we how we study the kinetics of the process. I, I told you that view, <coughs> the major advantage of the biological process or biochemical process is that as the, uh, from the same substrate we can produce n number of products. I have given the example that <coughs> sugar can be converted to acetic acid, sugar can be converted to citric acid, sugar can be converted to uh, uh, the, that uh, your acetic acid, uh, sugar can be converted to lactic acid. So, different products you can get, but if you look at the chemical process as your product changes, their raw material changes. So, that is that is and here in the in the biochemical process what we do we, we change the microorganism and as we change the microorganism we get the different type of product. So, micro <coughs> the living system main, main uh, emphasis is to be given how we can allow our desired organism to grow in the reactor. So, that we, we discuss in details in this and how the microbial growth and product formation and substrate degradation can be can be <coughs> taken into account in this system. After having all this information, then we switch over to the very one important thing that is bioprocess analysis, upstream and downstream processing. Now, we I told you that when, whenever we have any kind of bioprocess that before whatever processes we involve before the bioprocess we call upstream processing and after the bioprocess is over then we shall have to do the purification of the process that we call downstream processing. So, here, <coughs> here that in the bioprocess analysis first we discuss the scale up and scale down of the bioreactor which is very important because in the in the in the day to when we do any kind of research in the laboratory we we develop the things in the lab scale uh, but lab scale we, it might be carried out either in the test tube or in the conical flux or in the very small reactor of capacity 2 to 10 liters but that is not good enough for the commercialization of the process but when you do do the commercialization of the process they will run in the very big scale the uh, the main main purpose of doing this uh, the environment that we have in the small reactor similar environment should prevail in the big reactor so for for doing so how the different operational parameter changes that we discuss in the scale up of the bioreactors and then uh, there is another term very important what we call scale down scale down basically suppose <coughs> We cannot do any kind of optimization study in the in the, in the big scale fermenter because uh, because if if some negative results we are, we get then this incurred lot of loss in the fermentation process. So it is better we should do all the optimization study in the small scale reactor and when we develop all the optimized parameter then we can apply it in the uh, bigger scale study that we call scale down. Then after having this, then another very important thing is the process design. As per design is concerned, there is two type of design involved in the biochemical processes. One is called process design, another is called soft flow design. Process design basically involves that what are the parameters involved for operating the process. And soft flow design basically it is a mechanical design. So, the scope of this particular course is on the only on the process design not on the machine design or the uh, that uh, soft flow design. So, we try to discuss what are the parameters how you can monitor different parameters for the process design and after having this idea that we discuss the transport phenomena of the bioprocess, we try to discuss um, three different type of transport trans transport phenomena one is momentum transport 
and there is the uh, <coughs> that uh, heat transfer and there is the mass transfer that all the things plays very important role as for example momentum transfer if you look at it is something similar to the fluid dynamics that the mixing characteristics of the fluid plays very important role and uh, and second we have heat transfer that greatly involved for the sterilization of the bioreactor because i told you sterilize that we shall have to allow our desired organism to grow in in the in, in the in the media and then naturally that all other contaminants should be free so that in our desired organism can grow so the, that you know that so heat transfer is very important then i told mass transfer because most of the fermentation process are operated aerobically and major bottlenecks of the master that uh, aerobic fermentation process is the dissolved oxygen concentration because oxygen is sparingly soluble in the fermentation process so so mass transfer how the we can improve the mass transfer that we discuss in this transport phenomena then after that we have two uh, upstream processes one is we have air and medium sterilization uh, air sterilization how we we can do the air sterilization i i i told you that two type of air is to be sterilized one is called stagnant air and there is moving air and uh, suppose we we spot the air through the uh, bioreactor that is the moving air and stagnant air means suppose we we want to do some kind of operation in this particular room then <coughs> then uh, the room is to be sterilized that is the stagnant air and for the stagnant air sterilization usually we use the uv rays or you know germicidal spray that uh, sterilize this environment but for the moving air usually we if use the physical separation technique we use some kind of filtration technique just to remove the contaminants present in the air and in case of medium sterilization we we find the heat is a uh, good media for the medium sterilization because water is co good conductor of heat so so you know that we we try to design both air filter and medium sterilization process that we discuss several numerical problems during uh, covering this course and then uh, finally we come to the uh, purification of the product what you call downstream of this uh, uh, downstream processing because whenever we produce any kind of product that should be marketed in the purified form and to get to purify the product several steps are involved before the product is purified so how how the different uh, this uh, downstream processing can be operated different filter solid liquid separation process liquid liquid uh, the extraction process how the crystallization process evaporation process all we try to explain in this downstream processing and finally we we did this uh, material and uh, economic uh, analysis of the process to give you idea how you can whatever knowledge you acquired during this course how we can apply it in real fermentation process so this uh, this is the this is the way we have designed the whole uh, course i hope it will be very useful those who are really working with the biochemical processes now if you look at the course content that we started with uh, this microbiology then we started with microbiology that uh, we try to understand what are the different microorganisms present and how what is the classification how their characteristics differ from each other how they look under the microscope how morphologically they differ from each other then what is the, how their size varies from each other the all this thing we we try to discuss in the microbiology lecture after that that we try to give you some information on the biochemistry of the process because that is the, i told you that more all the organism they follow the metabolic pathway in the metabolic pathway you have chain reaction you have to find out that that uh, that reaction so that you can you can you can have your strategy um, uh, how we can get your desired product i can give the example suppose a to b p to c c to d like this you are doing so you are interested the product of c so we have the enzyme that is involved here so this is suppose this is e1 this is e2 
and this is the 3. So, we shall have to put some kind of inhibitor here, so that the formation of D can be reduced, so that more accumulation of C take place in this process. So, that uh, so biochemistry of the process is very important and then, <coughs> then we find out that we try to discuss the what are the different bioproducts that is available in the market and their market values, because that is very important, because because you know, those who are involved with the uh, biotechnology or biochemical area uh, for processes, they should know what are the different products that are available in the market. And we try to classify that uh, these products in the three, three different types, the low value, high volume products, medium value, medium value, medium volume products and um, high value, uh, high value and low volume products. So, this is how we do the classification. After that, the, uh, we try to discuss the stoichiometry of the biochemical process. I told you it is very important to do the material and energy analysis of the process. And after having this, this we, we just started with the chemical reaction, chemical uh, reaction uh, thermodynamics. We try to discuss how thermodynamics plays important role in the chemical processes. Now, after this, uh, we, we covered this uh, kinetics of the homogeneous reaction, chemical reaction, how there are different type of reactions. As for example, we have, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, irreversible reaction, we have reversible reaction, we have chain reaction, we have autocatalytic reaction. The different type of reaction, how this can be, uh, we, we, we can write the mathematical expression for this type of equation, how we can find out the rate constant, how we can find out the order of reaction, this is very important. I, I told you that the rate constant and order of reaction all are experimental parameter with the help of experiment, uh, experimental study you can find out all these values. And after getting all the information, then we go for the, uh, we try to give you the information, what are the different type of reactors uh, are available. And reactors basically is a vessel in which the reaction take place. And then after getting this idea, we, we discuss that uh, reactor analysis. And reactor analysis is very important. I told you just to find out that you know what is the volume of the reactor. Not only the volume of the reactor, we can select what type of process will be most suitable for your process. I can I can I can give the example. Suppose we want to produce a certain amount of product. Suppose I want to produce one ton of product per day. Now getting one ton of product per day, what will be the minimum size of the reactor? Because as as the size increases, the 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 involvement of the price for this uh, process will be more. That is that uh, that that is to be taken into account. So that is why the reactor analysis plays very important role. And uh, I told you that two uh, that uh, two type of process uh, is mostly we have we have batch process, we have continuous process. Another process we have what we call back feed batch process. So three different process we discuss in details. After after getting the information of the chemical reaction engineering, then we started discussing the kinetics of enzyme catalytic reaction by using free enzyme systems. We try to discuss that what do we understand by enzymes? Enzymes basically they are uh, they are the globular protein. Not necessarily enzymes are protein. Due to the advancement of organic chemistry, now it is possible to produce some enzyme that synthetically, but those in number of those enzymes are very few. Basically, the enzymes are protein and they are globular in structure. And the protein with active site, we call it that uh, enzyme. That you know that. So and purpose of the enzymes is just like a catalyst and role of a catalyst, as you know, to lower the activation energy. As we lower the activation energy, the rate of reaction increases. But after the reaction is over, it remains unaltered. So all the different type of <laughs> the different type of enzymatic reaction <laughs> we try to discuss. Then we discuss the michaelis menten equation, which uh, which is which is used for explaining the uh, the enzymatic reaction kinetics and how later on that how uh, Briggs and Helen they justify the michaelis menten equation with the help of reaction kinetics. 
we try to discuss different type of inhibition process, we discuss competitive inhibition, we discuss the non competitive inhibition, we discuss the uncompetitive inhibition. Because on the basis of the inhibition, it is possible to estimate different type of uh, chemicals present in the reaction mixture, particularly complex chemicals. I, I, I have given the example of pesticide, uh, which is very complex chemicals that can be estimated with the help of enzy the enzymatic reaction kinetics. Now, <clears throat> after having all this information, then we try to discuss the immobilized enzyme system. Immobilized enzyme system is advantageous as compared to free enzyme system. The reason is that in the free enzyme system, after reaction is over, enzyme remains as the impurities in the reaction mixture, so you have to take it out. And but in case of immobilized enzyme system, you can reuse the again the enzyme again and again. And after the reaction is uh, when your, your product is coming out, this is more or less free from the enzyme, so your purification process will be little bit simpler. So, then we try to discuss the kinetics of the immobilized enzyme system, how the heterogeneous reaction kinetics can be explained. We have come across two new terms, one is called dam color number and the effectiveness factor and uh, we, we try to find out how these two parameters that, uh, um, that you know changes uh, during the immobilization system. And I, I told you that you know two type of things that happen in the heterogeneous reaction kinetics either is, is mass transfer control or reaction control. Now, if you have mass transfer control that means we shall have to improve the mass transfer of the process so that we can get maximum amount of product. If it is a reaction control you have to improve the uh, ca <coughs> characteristics of the reactions so that we can we can get the maximum amount of product. Now, after that we switch over to the uh, that you know the cell growth kinetics, substrate utilization, product formation and uh, that biomass formation which is which is the uh, which is the heart of this biochemical engineering. So, we have we have uh, we have discussed this under we have been the several lectures we discussed it's a different type of uh, different type different type of numerical problems. One thing that is very important here, I want to emphasize that when you use any kind of living system, we shall have to be very careful that about the inuko, uh, that uh, age of the culture. Because why the age of the culture, if you look at the life cycle of the cells, we have lag phase, we have block phase, stationary phase and the death phase. The every phase has its significance, because if you look at lag phase, it is known as the acclimatization phase, lock phase is the active phase stationary phase is a starvation phase and death phase is the uh, death of the, the mostly the death of the cells occur. So, if you look at that the organisms where it is very active that is in the log phase and usually that when you do any kind of inoculation of the organism in the, in the production media or in the inoculum fermenter we should have to uh, know uh, that mid log phase and the lag, late log phase. Now, it, age of the culture, if it is in between the mid log phase and late log phase, uh, you will get uh, very good results. If you, if you, if you inoculate the culture close to the stationary phase, you may not get the appropriate results, uh, your desired results in the fermentation process. So, this plays a very important role and then we discuss uh, this monode equation, which is uh, Bonnet model, which is something similar uh, as compared to the Michaelis Menten equation. Then we, we have come across with different type of other models like part equation. We discussed the Ludeking pirate model. Part equation mostly deals with the maintenance of the cells, and Ludeking pirate model discuss with the how the how the product formation uh, that relate with the growth of the cells, and then. Or there are other other equations we have with the inhibition of the uh, uh, cells. We have uh, here also we discuss the competitive inhibition, non-competitive inhibition of the process that uh, we also may occur in the microbial system. So all these things we try to incorporate in this particular uh, the lectures. Now after having all this information, then we switch over to the process design, the, the design and analysis of the activated sludge process that uh, we, we have taken this as the instance 
that how uh, when you when you talk a particular process how the process design can be done how the different operational parameters can be monitored or calculated that we try to discuss in this lecture uh, we have taken into consideration activated sludge process which mostly used for the treatment of the waste water and also we, we, we discuss the anaerobic digester where we, 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 we can convert the uh, waste through some useful products through some kind of methane or uh, hydrogen which is can be used as a source of energy. After having all this information then we switch over to the scale up of the uh, bioreactor. I told you, told you this is very important because uh, whatever we develop in the small scale uh, that uh, directly we cannot apply to the bigger scale until unless you have uh, some kind of analysis of the process. The one analysis that is very much required is the scale up of the process. How during the scale up of the process we take into a account that whatever environment uh, under wh the environment you get the uh, for, for your maximum product formation similar environment you have to maintain in the uh, bigger scale of fermentation process. So that you have to you have to for doing so how the operational parameter changes that we discuss in this particular lectures. And then here all we also taken into consideration I, I told you that scale down of the process that how suppose some uh, high bulk with citric acid industry now suppose uh, we find out some parameters plays important role may, may has some significant role to increase the productivity of the process but uh, directly we cannot apply to the uh, the, the big fermenter we first uh, try give the trial in the small fermenter and if we are satisfied then and only then we can go for the bigger fermentation process and after this we try to discuss the different type of transport phenomena of the bio process I told you three different type of transport plays very important role one is the momentum transfer and the, the heat transfer and there is the mass transfer so we discuss all these things in details. Now uh, we, we also discussed the air sterilization and medium sterilization of this process in details how these processes can be designed I, and then operation we have given the instance of the operation of industrial fermentation process. I have given the instance of citric acid industry and how you can do the material analysis of the process, how different, how you can calculate how much a material is required in different. Uh, through the operation of the different process as for example how much cane molasses is required for getting a desired amount of citric acid that how you can calculate how much <coughs> lime is required for the precipitation of citric acid. So all these things we try to uh, show you here then process control is uh, any I, uh, we know that uh, that you know slowly slowly step into the automation process and as we as we switch over to the automation of the process then we, we put lot of control devices and how different control devices are there and the biochemical process couple of controls that plays very important role as for example pH, temperature, hesitation speed, foam control uh, uh, so you know that all these controls plays a very important role. Then we have downstream processing we have we discussed the different uh, units of the downstream processing like uh, filtration process like uh, different uh, solid liquid separation process then we have uh, chromatographic process, crystallization process, vaporization process, so, uh, adsorption process all these things we try to discuss in the downstream processing. And finally we discuss the economic analysis of the bio process just to give you an idea of what are the because we, we have come across two type of expenditure that is involved in the bio process or any kind of chemical or biochemical industry one is the fixed expenditure and there is the operating expenditure. The fixed expenditure how you calculate or an operating and expenditure how we calculate how and that uh, co that we compare with our uh, selling of the product or what the prior, prior that uh, price revenue we get after selling the product we try to compare with that and from that we can calculate the profit profit you you gain in the in a particular industry. So this all information we have given. <coughs> Now after that, <coughs> now the I I recommend to you a couple of books. You just uh, go through this. I I I I must say that this book is very good. This is the biochemical engineering uh, the fundamentals written by Bailey and Ollis. Then chemical reaction engineering by Octave Lebensfeld. 
uh, bioprocess engineering principle the Dudon and bioprocess basic concept that is Suler and Karge. So, these are the different books you can consult to under to clear your uh, concept on this process. Now, total assignment of this project, uh, uh, this particular course will be 12 and uh, one assignment for five, five lectures. So, that will be given to you and uh, this is the outcome of this particular process to understand the chemical reaction engineering that you should understand. I hope you have have some idea on this uh, what we mean by chemical reaction engineering to find out the stoichiometry of biochemical process. So, you get the idea how you can do the stoichiometry of the bioprocess to understand the enzymatic reaction uh, kinetics using free and immobilized enzyme and then to find out the cell growth kinetic product formation and substrate degradation to determine the parameters involved for the bioprocess design, parameters involved for scale up of the bioreactor to understand momentum, energy, mass transport involved in bioprocesses to do material analysis of industrial fermentation process to design air and medium sterilization to analyze the downstream processes and also economic of the bioprocess. This is the outcome of this particular uh, course and we have I have two uh, teaching assistant for this course. One is uh, that uh, Jhasi L. Banarasi, the she is, uh, she is a very active person and she is doing PhD at the department of biotechnology if you have any question and her background is mostly on biotechnology and uh, we have Chandan Mahato, uh, his background is chemical engineering. So, if you have any question you can in the forum you can raise that question they will answer uh, your question and to clear your doubts. And uh, this is some I want to show you some of my published book. This is the, <coughs> the, the biohydrogen production fundamentals and technology advance. This is published by CRC Press. Another is biohydrogen fuel for the future. This is the first book in the world we have published. This is published by Pan stands for publishing company. Then we publish algal biodefinery and integrated approach so published by Springer. Another book we publish the microbial fuel cell <coughs> that, uh, that published by Springer. Now, uh, we are going to show you uh, one video that is on 20 liter bioreactors for the continuous uh, uh, biohydrogen production by using Klebsiella bio uh, Klebsiella uh, uh, the pneumonia at IIT Kharagpur to, to give you some kind of idea on the biochemical process and, uh, and this is our website and if you go to the website you will get the detailed information of our, of our group what kind of work we are doing. At the Indian Institute of Technology Kharagpur, we had a mission mode project on hydrogen production through biological routes. This is uh, under the sponsorship of Eminari. And here we try to demonstrate that uh, uh, continuous hydrogen production by using immobilized whole cell by uh, Klebsiella pneumonia, a local isolate. This is the bioreactor and you can see this is the watch glass and through the watch glass you can find out the volume of the liquid media present inside the reactor. And these are the other different units that is attached with this reactor. First is the feed tank where you take the raw materials and this is the peristaltic pump and this is how the peristaltic pump is in operation. In operation. And you can see that uh, the, uh, this is the way how aseptically we can transport the feed from the feed tank to the reactor. Now, here we, you can see there is a thermostat to just to uh, show the temperature in the bioreactor and the here we have some sampling por port where from where we can draw the sample. This is the recycle tank where we, we, we take the uh, liquid uh, which is coming out from the reactor and recycle back to the rea reactor just to increase the retention time of the, uh, the, the media so that uh, the percentage conversion efficiency of the substrate increases.
Now, this is the this is kind of device we de develop uh, that is uh, just to maintain some kind of vacuum in the reactor and we have seen the, le the Lee Catlier principle equilibrium constant equal to concentration of product divided by concentration of substrate. Now, since our product is gas, we can easily remove if we apply some kind of vacuum and then more substrate will convert it to product to, to maintain the uh, equilibrium constant constant and this is uh, this is the how the our pressure regulating system works. Now, we 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 we, uh, we open this uh, pipeline, so that the gas whatever is accumulated that can be collected in the gas collector. But this is passed through the carbon dioxide absorber, here we use 50 percent of KOE solution to absorb carbon dioxide and here we have a trap just to uh, uh, protect uh, this uh, KOE, it should not disturb our fermentation process. Finally, we try to find out that you know how, what is the nature of flame of the hydrogen, we find it is perfectly blue. So, thank you very much, I wish you all the best and uh, I hope uh, this uh, course will be very much useful for you and, uh, and for your uh, future career. Thank you very much.